let's come to the next question, a question that was asked by Timothy. And uh, the question was, I sometimes get a very high ejection fraction. What am I doing wrong? Good question. I think that's um, something that I would like to answer uh, myself uh, using a video that is part of our course. Uh, so here is the video and then maybe we'll have some time to discuss this video in more detail. We tend to overestimate function in small ventricles. Why is that so? Here's a video that will explain this to you. Now observe these four different ventricles, each with a different size and a different left ventricle function. And we'll look at the stroke volume. Now, if you look at this normal ventricle, let's say he's generating 80 milliliters of stroke volume. To do that, he needs an ejection fraction of 60 and this area in blue would be the distance that the endocardium travels. In other words, the contractility. Now, if you compare a ventricle which is a little bit larger, has less ejection fraction, for him, for this ventricle to generate the same stroke volume, he does not need to move as much as the ventricle which is normal. In other words, with less contractility, it is able to generate the same stroke volume. And this is even more pronounced in this ventricle which is very large. Again, the same stroke volume, but in this case with very All these ventricles do the same thing, but they do it differently. This one with little motion, but with a large ventricle, while this ventricle here on the left, which is now smaller than normal, has to contract very, very vigorously to generate the same stroke volume. So, in essence, if we have such a ventricle, we might think, yes, he's doing fine because he has a high ejection fraction, but in essence, he's doing not much more than normal ventricle, but he's already on the upper limits of what he can do. So, rule two again, we tend to overestimate ejection fraction or left ventricle function rather in patients who have small ventricles. So the key message is um, you're not doing anything wrong if you get a very high ejection fraction because remember ejection fraction is a percentage value, a percentage of volume which is expelled during systole relative to the end diastolic volume. And if you have a very small end diastolic volume, obviously to keep the stroke volume normal, you have to eject as much blood as possible and then you have a very high ejection fraction. So this is something you see in, for example, patients who uh, are hypertensive with concentric left ventricle hypertrophy and small ventricles. You see it in patients with aortic stenosis. Um, and this is something which I believe is completely under-recognized in uh, the community, but very, very important because uh, in essence, we base many of our decisions on ejection fraction and Therefore, I think we should also consider the size of the ventricle. You know, maybe it's uh, best if you would index the uh, ejection fraction to the size of the ventricle. I just want to add two more points, or le let's start with the, with the small ventricles. Um, definitely true, and I also have the impression that if the heart is really small and the ventricle is really small, sometimes you're just not in the right axis. So you probably just cut the ventricle a little bit <clears> wrong and then you already have this small ventricle with an ejection fraction probably 65-70% and then you cut it wrong and then you have also papillary muscles there in, in your way basically and then you even overestimate more. So this is, the, mm. this is a huge pitfall in, in, in measuring ejection fraction whereas also when the, when the ventricles are, are bigger or larger also in athletes for example you measure an ejection fraction of 45-50% and you think oh my god this is really borderline or already reduced left mm. ventricular function. Yeah. Whereas you just have to see the ventricle during exercise and then everything is perfectly normal. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a very good additional point. There's some methodological issues as well as uh, Martin mentioned, the issue of foreshortening. And uh, don't forget that also you will have a whole heart motion. In other words, uh, if you have the heart coming in and out of the plane, you will have a kind of a pseudo smalling or a decrease in size simply because you're you know, more on the outer parts of the ventricle. Mm -hmm. That also plays a role and the issue of the papillary muscles must also be considered. So uh, there are numerous different limitations of ejection fraction that must be considered. Um, yeah, I guess that's, uh, that sums it up mm -hmm. and just um, explains why you can get very high ejection fraction sometimes in some patients. Mm -hmm.